Today, let's talk about using CSS selectors, type, class, and ID. Even if you've never worked with CSS before, understanding how to design with them is super easy to understand once you learn the basics. And it's definitely worth the time to learn this workflow because using selectors will speed up your design time and overall make your job a whole lot easier. A selector binds an element or group of elements to the design rules as defined in the styles pane. Element characteristics are kept in sync even if you make a million changes during the development of your projects. This saves you from having to re-enter the same style choices multiple times. Now, there are three CSS selectors that you can apply styles to. There's the type, which is used for your default element styles, a class name for setting a variation from the type settings, and an ID for applying an individual unique set of styles for a one-time variation. In the app, they're color-coded too. The type is um, identified with a pink line, class is identified with a blue line, and ID is identified with a yellow line. This way you can quickly identify which selector a style is associated with. I'll show you some examples of these using this cute cat theme. Yes, I'm a cat lover, so this one is my favorite. It is a good habit to set up the type when using an element for the first time. This is where you apply all of your default style choices. I'm going to reset all the styles for this paragraph using the handy reset control on the styles pane and then delete it. From the content pane, I would add my paragraph element to the canvas. Then go to the styles pane and scroll to the apply styles control and select to all elements of this type. I'm going to set the paragraph to the font type Roboto, align it to the left, give it the size 18 picks, and the color gray. Finally, on the layout section, I'm going to set a max width of 740 pixels. As you can see, anytime I make a selection, a pink indicator will be placed next to it. Now watch what happens when I add another paragraph element. Boom, it looks exactly the same. Anytime you save it as the type, it will automatically appear like that anytime you add the same element to the canvas. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a class name. A class includes style variations from the type. Let's take a look at the cat bios. They all have the formatting I applied before with the alignment to the left. But that left align does not look so great in my hero message above. Um, centering it would make it look a lot better, maybe even making it larger in size too. So on the styles pane, I will change the apply styles control to the to selected class option. Then I will scroll up to the box type class, and I will give it in the element a name. In the example, I will call it hero paragraph. Now I will apply the new styles I want the paragraph to have, including centering it and upping that font size to about 20 pixels. Take notice that the selections I'm um, applying will now have a blue indicator, blue for class. One last tweak under the layout section, I'm going to set the left and right margin to auto. Now, if I scroll down on the page to my other hero section and give that same class name, hero paragraph, to the other paragraph element, it will sync the styles I entered previously. 
Because class names will be the most used selector, it will always be the option auto-selected when opening the, opening the styles pane. Also, if you forget to give it a class name, the app will auto-generate one for you. Last thing, it is possible to add multiple classes for extra style variations, but we'll review that in another video. The third selector is an ID. An ID is a single instance of a style rule. Only when you want to give something a unique style or styles um, that won't be found anywhere else on the page would you give it an ID. Let's go back up to the top hero paragraph. This time, I want only this paragraph to be red. On the styles pane, change the apply styles to to this element only. Then scroll up to the section ID selector and in the ID box, give it a special name. In this case, I'm naming it Red Hero. I can now apply the special characteristics such as the red coloring and maybe some other formatting too while I'm here. These styles will be highlighted with a yellow indicator. Now ID is a unique style, cannot be reused on a page. But the cool part is when an element has an ID, you can link directly to it within a page. Just add hashtag ID name at the end of your link. So for example, if my website was called catlover.com, I could link right to this section by using the link catlover.com hashtag red hero. Okay, you now know the basics of using CSS selectors. Um, in my next video, we'll cover using um, multiple classes and we'll dive in a little deeper on uh, more use case examples. Thanks for joining me.